Congress, we still care. That's right. That's right. And you see what's happening in Washington? Well, we've got the pleasure tonight of hearing from uh, one of the authors and architects of what's going on in Washington right now, uh, Representative Gary Peters. So, we're gonna, we've got a nice agenda in addition to Gary. We've got uh, Melissa Bernardi from the Oakland County Organizing for America. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, how we can organize ourselves for the upcoming campaign season. And then uh, Cassandra Ul Ulbrich and Ted Golden are going to candidates that are going to be running, or are running, going to be running, are running, for the uh, the Democratic uh, seat, or the what we hope will be a Democratic seat, <laughs> for the 12th district in the uh, in the Michigan Senate. So my name is Phil Borchardt. I'm actually the outgoing chairman of Rochester Area for Change, and our incoming chairman is Mr. David Hartman. Where did he go? There he is. He's in the back. Hi, David. Welcome to the chairmanship. And uh, David put a nice committee together to organize this event. So up front, I want to thank David and Dodie June, Angela Youngblood, Joanne Raphorst, and Ava Judy Amir for putting this event together. Thank you. And there is a door prize at the end of this event. You must be present. So you must be present to win, which means you have to stay to hear the candidates speak because they're going last, all right? <laughs> So without further ado, let me just introduce Gary Peters. Uh, he doesn't really need a lot of introduction because I'm sure you all voted for him. Yeah. 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 But he is our United States representative serving Michigan, 9th con con Congressional District here in Oakland County. He's a fifth generation Oakland County resident, and he's dedicated his life to serving this community in Michigan and the United States of America. As a new member of, Com of Congress, he's on the Finance Services Committee, and that's a great role for him because he's got 20 years of experience in the financial sector. Um, he's been fighting foreclosures and fighting for our auto industry, as in getting the Lake Orion plant to stay open, for example. So it's an excellent accomplishment. He's also on the Science and Technology Committee, fighting for new jobs in the technology sector for us here in our area. probably know he was in the Michigan State Senate where he introduced three bills to cut taxes on the first day in office. He, uh, he's a Navy veteran, served with distinction in the Gulf War, and he's a big believer in education as evidenced by his own experience uh, going to school. He uh, is a graduate of Rochester High School. Alma College, he's got his MBA from U of D Mercy, law degree from Wayne State, and he's just finishing his PhD, in, or he finished it in philosophy of ethics for development at Michigan State. So he's made the round of all the colleges. The Lord knows he needs that ethics development in Washington. That's a good degree to have. Um, so he lives right in the area here with his wife Colleen and three children. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Rochester's own Gary Peters. And so welcome, uh, or it's great to be here with all of you, and uh, look forward to having an opportunity to have a little discussion on what's happening in Washington. Uh, there's just a, a few things going on there, so we can just take a few minutes <laughs> talking about that. Uh, but uh, really, what I'd like to do is uh, open it up for questions, because I, I know uh, nobody here is bashful, and I'm sure you have lots of questions about uh, what has been uh, happening, or what is happening, what's going to happen, and issues. But uh, before I, I get into that, that and a little bit of update, I just want to thank all of you for your, for your activism. Thank you. Uh, because uh, you're, you're out there working uh, to, to bring about the change and uh, worked for President Obama and uh, it was a, a force to be reckoned with here in Rochester which uh, traditionally doesn't have a lot of Democrats uh, but uh, uh, it was a strong, strong turnout uh, in the last election and that would not have happened without all of you on the ground, your commitment, knocking doors, making calls, uh, putting stamps, all the things that you do. So thank you for your activism. It does make a difference. So. Thank you for being here. 
folks, uh, that uh, it seems like we were just in an election, and uh, <laughs> guess what, we're in another one now this year, so we're going to have to go back at it again and want to talk a little bit about uh, about that and, uh, and answer any of your questions about that. I want to just touch on a, on a couple things uh, in Washington uh, that uh, I've been working on and, and issues I think are very important to us here. Certainly there isn't anything more important than, than jobs. Uh, and getting the Michigan economy going is, uh, is number one, and a focus on the uh, entire country and getting those uh, jobs uh, moving uh, forward. Uh, I've been uh, working, as uh, Phil mentioned, on the auto industry in particular, making sure that we continue to have an auto industry in this state. And we know we've got to diversify. We've got to have a lot of other different industries and, and work in building our strengths that we have in science and technology and other areas. But you can't uh, diversify your economy if you lose your core industry. You've got to have that one first. And, so we uh, have gone through some incredibly tough times with uh, the bankruptcies of General Motors and Chrysler. And as uh, a guy who grew up here, I and mean, this is something that I'm sure you all share this, uh, it isn't anything we would even fathom that you'd ever see that General Motors would be in a bankruptcy. Yeah. Both General Motors and Chrysler. I mean, that just went to the very core of who we are and up those Michiganders and the pride that we have in, a, in an important industry uh, for our state. Uh, on uh, the good news, uh, I think we're through a lot of uh, the bad and we're looking at things stabilizing. In fact, yeah, Probably saw the sales were up, Ford Motor Company sales were up strong, General Motors sales were up, uh, Chrysler was up a little bit, not a lot, but uh, they're still coming out with some new products, but at least it's stabilized, it isn't uh, continuing to drop, uh, we just need to continue to, to move forward. And, and part of that to move forward is making sure that we're producing those next generation cars here in Michigan. I mean, we're, we're going to race for our lives uh, with the Chinese and the Japanese and the Europeans and others that are producing those cars. Uh, and uh, the governments that are working with those industries, because they understand that they are strategic industries, important uh, from a, just to maintain a manufacturing base. And certainly that's the, the case here. Uh, I've uh, worked on a bill called the uh, Advanced Vehicle Technology Act, which uh, actually passed in the House as well. We uh, passed it in September, uh, which authorizes about $3 billion over the next five years for advanced uh, research in hybrids and uh, the new alternative technologies, primarily focused on auto suppliers, which are folks here in this uh, district. Uh, it got wide bipartisan support, which is nice to see something happening in a bipartisan fashion uh, uh, in Congress, that it can happen. I mean, I had the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, endorsing it, the National Association of Manufacturers, the labor unions, and all of the environmental groups. So that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a good bill for, as far as a strategic. Uh, it just so happens uh, that most of the money is actually going to end up here in Southeast Michigan. And, oh, uh, which yeah. is, uh, that's a key thing, particularly with our engineers. When, uh, one thing that I, I always have to deal with misconceptions about Michigan when I'm dealing in, in Washington, and a lot of folks in Washington see Michigan as this uh, factory and smokestack state, and we have those, and we like them, we're proud of them, but we're a lot more than that, too. We're actually uh, have an incredible uh, intellectual base, especially with our engineering base. And what I remind my colleagues or let them know in Washington regularly is that we have more engineers in Southeast Michigan than any other region of the country. I and mean, most people are amazed to hear that. It's an incredible uh, uh, competitive advantage we have. Of course, our, our challenge now is to keep them here. So that once they move away, it's tough to get them back. So we've got to make sure those jobs are still here. And those lead to manufacturing jobs and really the, the whole economy, which is why this, uh, this is, uh, is so important. To, to get this passed. It's now over in the Senate, and Senator Gabby Stabenow has taken the lead over there in the Senate, and hopefully we'll get that uh, uh, passed uh, very soon. The other thing that I've been very involved in, as, as mentioned, I'm on Financial Services Committee, so that has, uh, that, that's uh, Barney Frank is the, the chair, and that deals with all of the financial uh, industry from the banks to Wall Street to the insurance, and uh, that's been a pretty busy committee too this last year. Uh, in fact, with all of the uh, talk about health care and all of the media attention that we've had on health care, uh, that we've been going along on this, and this, this uh, bill is uh, equally as complex, if not more complex, than health care. It certainly has a tremendous impact on the lives of uh, everyday folks. And uh, We passed that bill uh, in uh, the end of December. It's now over uh, in the Senate. Uh, hopefully uh, they'll be able to move that through, although I'm very frustrated with the Senate and uh, their inability to move a lot of what I think are very good pieces of legislation that we put forward. But uh, I think uh, the bill stru struck a real good balance uh, in understanding that uh, under the previous administration, uh, there really wasn't the regulation that you needed for the financial industry. And the pendulum had swung way too far. Uh, basically, greed was allowed to, to run wild. And we know that we're all paying the price uh, as a result of that. And it was important for us to bring that pendulum back, make sure there's the oversight necessary so that we never have this kind of financial meltdown uh, again. Uh, and uh, we were able to do that. 
I think we got a right balance. You don't want the pendulum to go too far and start interfering with the ability of the markets to do what they do, but you've got to put in the, the framework to, to protect taxpayers <coughs> and investors. And I'll be happy to, uh, to answer any questions uh, on that as well. Uh, the other issue that I'm sure is on everybody's mind is uh, health care. Uh, that continues to, to move forward, uh, hopefully. Uh, we uh, passed uh, two versions, as you know, and uh, I voted. I'm happy to say that I voted for the House version of the health care bill. Uh, because I look at it, uh, this issue, and we've had a 